Hey there. So as part of this video, what we are going to do is uh, kind of see how to start multipass if you know you have rebooted your system or you have closed the terminal or you know you have exited the VS Code environment. So we'll we'll take a look at how to go about reinitializing or respawning or re restarting the instance, the primary instance that we had created. So let's pull up a terminal. And by the way, not only that, we'll also talk about what the prerequisites to be able to compile a Linux kernel module are, and we'll kind of set up uh, you know, that in a moment. Okay, so what you need to do then is pull up a terminal and type multipass. Now, once you do that, multipass essentially presents the help options uh, or you know different options that are available, and we are going to use the list. So let's do multipass. Uh, list and we see that you know our primary instance here uh, the instance we had created as part of the setup videos that is available and it is in the stop state so what we are going to do to launch it again to activate it again is simply type um, multi pass space shell that's enough uh, once we do that it will start the primary uh, instance again and much like the previous videos drop uh, the prompt or you know get us into the terminal that's within the instance so this should take like a while and uh, once it's done uh, it will present to us the terminal that is within the primary machine or this virtual machine that we have created so let's just give it like few more seconds and here, here it is so now as it you know starts and drops the prompt for uh, as it, it has printed all of these details and among which is this ip address which is of use to us when connecting over vs code uh, okay so now the virtual machine or the sandbox environment or the primary machine um, that multipass is managing is activated right so the next step is we are going to go and much like previous video uh, you know connect it to vs code so let me pull up vs code and then just to revise we go to the remote extensions uh, option here on the left side you know click on that and then look for the ip address of this machine which happens to be 192.168.64.12 and as of previous video we had connected to this directory ldd where we mentioned we will run all our experiments so let's go into VDD and it asks us for the password. So let's you know, press the password, add the password and hit return. And you can ignore all of these files for now because I have added those in while doing some experiments offline. So ignore those for now. You know, let's close everything. And here in the Explorer view, we see all of this. Uh, let me, well, you might not see this, um, but let me kind of, you know, select one of them and then slowly select all of them and delete them so that's where we want to be a clean uh, you know clean directory now what we are going to do is kind of crucial which is to be able to take our c code and compile it into a kernel module uh, will require some utilities like compiler some header files all of those and to be able to ensure that you also have those utilities uh, what we are going to do is simply kind of uh, click control and the tilde key to bring up a terminal here and this terminal uh, okay, let me zoom this in also so this terminal uh, is same as the terminal we have here right so we see ubuntu at the rate primary here and we see ubuntu at the rate primary here so the terminals are same. Now what we are going to do is we are going to install some utilities that are required to be able to compile the, uh, the code into a loadable module. And to be able to do that, we are going to execute these commands here. So let me copy those and in a new file, put it right here in front of us. And let me just go through each one of them one by one. Uh, so what we are going to do is the first command here is essentially saying that we want to update the, the lists of a package manager which is called apt right uh, 
uh, you can look up the details of apt online uh, for our purposes we just want first to update the local repositories list of repositories and after that we say okay anything that needed an update you know go ahead and update those bring in the new packages uh, and you know update those packages so right now it's doing that and the last line here is the one that matters to us the most and let me kind of you know pull up my uh, marker so what we need here is certain tools that are required to be able to compile the code that is part of the package called build essential then while we are building our source code we also need the header files that relate to the current version of the linux kernel that we have right and the way we get these headers is we say hey you know install the linux headers and this right here is a dynamic command which fills in the version number and what version number this is this is the version number of our kernel right and then kmod is another utility that deals with you know loading kernel modules and things of that nature so all in all we only need these three utilities uh, or you know headers and two utilities to be able to compile our code uh, so let me first you know go ahead and show you what version of uh, uh, linux kernel we are using and the command is u name uh, hyphen r and then the uh, you know uh, version is 6.8.0 hyphen 35 generic and this entire text uh, gets put here so this is how it will look essentially right that is why we have this all right so let me copy all of this paste it here and let's go ahead and in my case everything was already installed so there was nothing to install and nothing to upgrade but in your case this process might take a while and now that we have all of this with us we are ready to dive into linux kernel driver development and you know run experiments and learn through that so with this i'll see you in the next one